Hey guys, Kyle here, and today I have a much requested resource pack and data pack example using the shader selector. So one thing that people seem to ask a lot is how to do screen shakes. So there's a couple approaches. You could teleport the player to themselves in some randomized fashion, um, or you can use a shader. And so the benefits of the shader, well, let's start with the drawbacks. They have to be in fabulous mode so that you can turn on and off the shader. Um, using the shader selector version 2. Uh, but the benefits are that it is multiplayer friendly and it's uh, pretty lightweight in terms of efficiency and uh, you can get some really good effects. It's, it's better and they're able to move while it's happening. So let's just take a look at how this shader works. I'm not going to go over how the shader selector v2. So if you go to the repo for shader selector v2, I've added the screen shake example here and it kind of discusses how the screen shake example works. There's essentially two different ones. There is screen shake uh, and screen shake advanced. So screen shake is actually, I would say actually screen shake is for advanced users, but the advanced kind of just has like additional features that are more complex. Um, but the shaders are pretty. So inside the screen shake, all it does is it goes into the VSH file as opposed to the FSH. And then essentially what we do is the same stuff that has to be here and then we create some variables. So what we do is we grab the control color and this is going to be the channel one's B value. And if that value is exactly one, then we're going to perform the screen shake. To perform the screen shake, we need to grab the control time, which will be a T variable, which we actually already have inside the shader selector. Although this is the first example that actually uses it. So you can grab the time variable, which will be a number going from zero to one in terms of seconds. And then we can feed that into a sinusoid function, which is an oscillation. And that oscillation can have a set frequency and a set magnitude. The frequency and magnitude are up here and they're hard coded in the basic version. And I would actually recommend hard coding it for your use case because um, you want to use as many channels for other things as possible or keep channels freed up. Um, but this kind of dedicates one of your channels to just controlling the screen shake for the most part. Or one of the values on one of your channels, which is a little bit better, uh, as opposed to occupying all 255 values on the channel. Now for the advanced screen shake, it's similar, but a little bit more complex. It basically takes up both channel one and channel two, so you can control the magnitude and frequency of the shaking via scoreboard in game. Um, well, you have to use the scoreboard to control the particle, and then part the particle controls the uh, two different channels, the particle that you play. And so that is why if I go ahead and go into my resource packs and put on the advanced, you will see that inside the data pack, it provides, uh, it controls the magnitude and frequency based on these scoreboards here. So you can see this will ramp it up as I flip the switch and you can see it shake more and more and more. So this allows like more dynamic control, but of course it does take up the entire channel one and entire channel two in order to get this effect that lets you change the value automatically. Anyways, guys, if you thought this was cool or useful, leave a like. Let me know what you want to see next. Maybe I'll add some more shader selector examples if they're simple, just to uh, help people get a head start on their projects. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.